guys, I hope everything's going well. Um, my friend Emily, as we all know, has inspired me to get back into making some more YouTube videos because I keep taking breaks because I am busy and I have a lot going on with a house of all my animals and oh my god, just a million things. So bear with me. But I thought I would make a video today about false water cobra. I've been working on writing a book about reptiles and I've been gathering just like as much information as I possibly can. And I'm writing it all down, putting it all into like a file. Um, I'm gonna put it out there eventually, but I might as well start getting some of this information out now while it's still relevant, new, and I have it fresh in my mind. So I will leave some links in the description below if you're interested in looking more into your false water cobras or wanna know more about the species. I think that's everything. Let's just get right into it. I'm gonna go get my false water cobra and let's talk about them. This is my baby false water cobra. These guys are a semi-aquatic new world species of snake that live in South America. And because of being semi-aquatic, they have really smooth and nice scales. And for this reason, they are also known as the Brazilian smooth snake. Now, despite the name calling it a cobra, a false water cobra is not a true cobra. It does not belong to the Naya family and instead belongs to the Colubrid family. These guys can make a hood, but their hood tends to be more sideways and they can actually flatten most of their body, not just their neck portion. False water cobras are a dineural species and they actually like to swim, climb, and burrow. For this species, I think it's really important to provide a lot of enrichment. They're just very active snakes. False water cobras have a lifespan of anywhere between 12 to 20 years. And as I said, this is a baby because these guys are actually one of the largest in the colubrid family. They can reach anywhere between four to 10 feet and they are super sexually dimorphic where females tend to get quite a bit bigger. These guys can also come in a variety of morphs such as hypo, lavender, silver. The false water cobra is carnivorous, but they actually have such a wide range of things that they can eat such as toads, tadpoles, frogs, fish, rats, other kinds of rodents, small mammals even. The false water cobra is known to be cannibalistic and will eat other snakes, but also eat other false water cobras. So now that we know a bit about the false water cobra, do these guys make good pets and how on earth do we care for them? Well, yes, I think they can make amazing pets. They are a super intelligent species, really active, really fun to watch and very unique and interesting. I would say they are about a medium level species as again, they do contain that venom yield. I did read a few cases of muscle paralysis or spasms or even just extreme swelling. So my first tip to anyone who's looking to own one and not get bit is buy a hook, learn how to use a hook, train your snake with a hook. When you're keeping a false water cobra, you wanna make sure that they can do everything that they would naturally do in the wild. As I mentioned, climbing burrowing, swimming. They need to have a pretty large water dish. Being semi-aquatic, they'll spend a good amount of their time in there. On top of that, you're gonna need a heat gradient of a hot spot around 90 to 95. And it is recommended because they do naturally bask in the wild that you get an on top bulb sort of heater. The cool side of their enclosure should be anywhere from about 78 to 85. Typically, you're gonna wanna hit somewhere right in between there. Now these guys are pretty wet and it is recommended to keep their humidity around 50 to 60%. But honestly, I find that even when I raise the humidity up to like 75, they do really well. A little trick to the humidity is making sure you have a large enough water dish. With a really big water dish, it'll bump that humidity like crazy. One thing to watch out for with a false water cobra and other colubrids is that they do have a very fast metabolism and therefore they go to the bathroom more than a regular snake. So we just wanna make sure we're keeping up with cage cleaning and making sure you get all that clean to prevent any bacterial infections that might occur. I personally don't think it is fair to keep an adult false water cobra in anything smaller than a four by two. Um, I personally suggest something a bit bigger, again, just saying how they are so movie and they really love to do things. Um, but that would be what I would put at the absolute minimum is just a four by two PVC. Regardless of the cage you use though, you wanna make sure that there is adequate ventilation as it is pretty humid in there. You don't want it to just be like a soppy wet mess. That kind of a thing can lead to scale rot or other respiratory infections, and we just don't want that. As for the substrate, I would look into maybe cypress mulch or orchid bark, something that can hold a good amount of humidity. 
And to make sure that you're not over and under in the humidity, I highly suggest a hygrometer. I typically feed my babies about once to twice a week, but as an adult, you'll want to feed them about once every week, as again, their metabolism is really fast. Something you don't want to do is ever feed them any prey that is larger than their body size. It's a lot healthier for them to have properly sized prey items. And finally, before we wrap the video, I just want to show you a couple things that I really love about this species specifically, and why it's one of my absolute favorites. For one, obviously, is that cobra hood, because what snake that has a hood that isn't a cobra? This one. This is like the only one that I can really think of right now. False cobras. <laughs> All sorts of false cobras. No, but I honestly think that the hood is the coolest thing. Although you want to be sure your enclosure is pretty escape proof because they can flatten most of their body and they can escape from practically anywhere. One of my other favorite things about these guys is the look of their eyes. The little stripes under their eyes giving them that kind of like cobra feel to them. As they get older, they turn out to be pitch black hatchlings. You can actually kind of see the ring in his eye there. I'm also in love with their intelligence, how docile they can truly become, and that they are still a bit of a challenge because of that rear fanged venomous. I honestly think this is a snake that can benefit pretty well anybody's snake collection, especially if you are like medium level snake keeper um, or above that. This is a great addition. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. That's everything about false water cobras for now. If you have any questions, comments, or any other information or articles, please drop them in the comments below. I'm always happy to learn. I'm always happy to answer any questions I can. All right, until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.